Announcement for, of iOS 17 in less than two weeks, tech enthusiasts mainly want Apple to prioritize stability over new features. As many people have experienced countless bugs on iOS 16, however, given that the last iOS stability update was iOS 15 and that if they keep up with their three-year cycle that iOS 18 will be the next stability update, iOS 17 will likely not be a stability update. On the other hand, there is a way that Apple could equalize stability and new features with future iOS versions that may seem a little harsh. Start cutting off iPhones from iOS support sooner. However, why would you cut off iPhones early? Why should Apple cut off iPhones sooner than they otherwise would when that would clearly screw over millions of iPhone users that have older iPhones that are going to force people to upgrade? If Apple did not support iPhones as long as they do, they could optimize iOS better for newer iPhones to be less buggy. While some of you are watching this video may be thinking I'm crazy for suggesting that iOS is buggy in the first place, most people I know that are experiencing bugs on iOS 16 are experiencing them on the newest iPhones that support it. And if you're using using an older iPhone such as an 8, 10, 10s, 10R, 11, 11 Pro, or an SE2, you may not know what I'm talking about because you are on an older iPhone. Hence, you are not experiencing bugs on iOS 16, or you may not just, or you may not, uh, you may just not update your iPhones like me. This way, the iPhone 12, iPhone 12, 13, SE3, and 14 hours will have more st stable iOS experiences, and people will not be begging for stability updates as much. Before we comment on anything about why Apple is doing the right thing by supporting for iPhones for a long time, if you already have, please delete the, the delete that. Please hear me out on what the first most common responses are likely to be sent along the lines of. Apple can optimize iOS to run on as many generations of the iPhone as they want to. After all, they are the largest tech company in the world, so they must have the resources to. Yes, Apple is the largest tech company in the world, and yes, they do have as many resources as they could possibly want. However, let's say that Old Navy, one of the largest clothing companies in the world, made shirts with little variation in sizes and gave them all out to all of the kids in my grade. I'll be going into ninth grade this fall for reference. Some kids would not even be able to put the shirts on because they'd be too small, while other kids would barely be able to keep the shirts on because they'd be far too big. The same principle applies to iPhones. The iPhone 8, 8 Plus and the 10 and the oldest, the oldest supported iPhones are very different from the iPhone 14, 14 Plus, 14 Pro, and 14 Pro Max because the newest iPhones have far more features than the oldest supported iPhones do. Even though the iPhone 8, 8 Plus and the 10 may lack a few features that iOS 16 introduced and the same will likely go for 17, the same core of iOS is still running on iPhones that are 5 and soon as these 6 if the rooms are correct generations apart, which is too hard for Apple to optimize for despite all their resources. As a result, iOS 16 is too slow on the oldest iPhones that run it, and it's too buggy on the newest iPhones that run it. However, just like how Old Navy sells many different sizes of shirts for, for everybody, Apple could leave iPhones up a floor of different iOS versions for each generation, or just one gen one version per generation or something like that. People don't want to be forced to upgrade their phones because Apple cuts them off because they don't see as much improvement in iPhones year after year like they used to, so they don't want to buy new iPhones more often. First of all, I understand people don't want to needlessly purchase new iPhones when they don't have to, as I don't want to either. However, the people that do purchase new iPhones are not getting a good experience due to bugs and they're not getting fully what they paid for in the first place. If Apple cut off iPhones sooner, then they could optimize iOS for the newest iPhones to be more stable, so customers will be more likely to upgrade their iPhones if, more if they get their money's worth. If iPhones got cut off sooner, then people with older iPhones would benefit because people, iPhones would not be slowed down as much with updates that they should not be receiving if they do not get as much support. Even though the decreased Apple support on iPhones could theoretically become an issue for people that use older iPhones, app developers will support older versions of iOS to combat that issue, just like the they do on Android because Android phones aren't support, don't get as much support as iPhones do. So if Apple decreased iPhone support, then customers will be actually getting better experiences. Secondly, if Apple did not support six-year-old phones like they do, then they could make more features that take advantage of newer iPhone's capabilities so that people will care more about having the latest iPhone. Apple profits from prioritizing customers over profits by supporting iPhones for longer than the competition. While supporting their devices for longer than the competition may seem like a move done on uh, honesty, in reality, Apple seems to be offering longer support on iPhones that way as many iPhones as possible can run what they want want the future of their company to be. Services, and more so essentially, subscription services. Yay, not really. 
However, as we all know, Apple's strategy to move to services rather than hardware is not working well to begin with, so Apple has no purpose for supporting iPhones as long as they do. But Apple doesn't need to emphasize on iOS, they need to focus on iPadOS instead. iPads have it even worse when it comes to being supported for too long, as the first iPad Pro from September 2015 is still getting the latest iPadOS version, or otherwise known as an iPad that's old enough to go into second grade this fall, which is older than I was when this iPad released. It is no wonder why iPads may not be getting enough professional features to replace a computer, because Apple has to make them support iPads that are so old that no one even uses them anymore. Except for me and my dad, but most people don't. However, if Apple should not be giving iOS 17 to the iPhone 8 like they are rumored to, then what should iOS 17 require? In my opinion, iOS 17 should require an iPhone 12 or later because when iOS 17 releases later this fall, the 12 series will be three years old. Besides, people iPhones generally start feeling old and behind after three years, at least in my experiences, so this will give people time to upgrade if they want to, especially if they're three-year contracts. Without being too much variety in iPhone generations, the to Apple has to, cannot make a work of software. This will give each generation of iPhone 4, 4 iOS versions, which as we've seen before with the iPhone 3GS, 4, and 5, 5C, a decent amount of support for, without creating the disasters of the iPhone 4S, 6S, SE1, and the 7 on their final iOS versions. Do you agree with me or not on why? Please comment that down below. As always, thank you all for watching this video. I'm the iTunes fanboy, and peace out.